welcome to a rainy weekend at the funky allotment. The weather isn't great. It's Saturday the 4th of July, um, otherwise known as Super Saturday. So the UK government has allowed pubs to open today after being closed for what, about 16 weeks or thereabouts. So yeah, I'm not in any rush to get to the pub to be fair. I can imagine it's going to be carnage today. I quite like the fact that I've been unable to do certain things like go in the pub. Um, I've got used to quite a simple life and I quite like that, especially being at the allotments every weekend. So yeah, I'm going to stick to that I think. I don't need the pub, especially now I'm making my own wine. Um, which is continuing to be an interesting pastime. I had a bottle of the, um, the red berry wine explode in the kitchen. It wasn't funny. Um, it was funny. It wasn't funny because I lost half a bottle of wine, but it was funny because it didn't explode. It wasn't like glass everywhere. It was um, just the cork blow out in red berry wine all over the kitchen. Honestly, my house smells like a brewery. Um, but yes, but I had a, my first glass of the red berry wine yesterday. It's worth it. It's really nice. Quite sweet. I think I probably won't put as much sugar in it next time. But yes, yeah, so the rhubarb wine is fermenting. And I've got another red berry wine that I need to rack this weekend at some point. And I'm going to do a lemon and ginger wine I think maybe next weekend um so yeah quite enjoying it still it's good fun but I just need to maybe learn how to stabilize add and stabilize to the wine pre-bottling it maybe to stop it from exploding all over the kitchen so yeah so this weekend at the allotment my jobs are it's, there's very little you can do really in the rain there isn't. You can do anything in the rain, I suppose, but I think it's not as fun, is it? So, as always, there's quite a bit of weeding that needs doing, so I'm going to try and weed the beds and maybe pull up some more of the red juke potatoes, transplant some squash into, the, into their place to reuse the bed. And thinking of maybe starting off some peas and beans, French, dwarf French beans, because they've just not taken this year. I don't know why. I planted them straight in the ground um, and they've just not come up. The peas did. I, I put them in like what I use for guttering and they come up brilliant so I transplanted them into one of the beds the end of my beetroot bed <sighs> pigeons at them um, I did try and cover them but I think the wind blew the net and off and pigeons at them so I need to plant some more I think so I'm going to give that another go I'm just going to plant an entire packet or two um, if I can get the lid of the seeds in. I'll show you. So I've got these ambassador, which I've never grown before. Um, it says outdoor sow in March to June. It's July, I know. I still sow them in July, it's fine. It'll be fine, we'll see. So yeah, I'm gonna have a go at some of them. These were the discounted ones I got from Wilco's last autumn. I think they were like 10 p for the pack. So yeah, I'm just gonna do all of them because if some get eaten then I've still got some left. So I'm gonna give them a go. And also the Dwarf French beans. So these are the purple TP ones. Yes. Um, I did these last year, they were lovely. So I'm gonna give these a go again this year. So yeah, so I need to soak these 
I do think it, it helps to soak them overnight. So I'm gonna, in fact, I might do a bit of an experiment. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna soak half of them and not soak the others and sew them straight into the ground and see which ones do better. So we'll see. So yeah, I'm gonna do them today, tomorrow. Uh, weeding, transplanting. Yeah, I think they're the jobs for today and tomorrow. Lovely. So last weekend, we've started a new project, which I'm really excited about. So preparing the ground. Um, and my friend Keith, who is a genius and does kind of all the the building stuff because he's really good at it and I'm really bad. Um, he's designed. Ah, look. So there's another plot holder who has got some hens that they need rehoming. So I've agreed to rehome them, which means I need a nice home for them to go in. So this is what Keith has designed, which is is going to go in the area next to me there, um, which I'll show you later. We've just, yeah, the ground's been prepared. We've moved things so it looks a bit tidier. Yeah, that's quite exciting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, not sure when that's going to get sorted because obviously Keith works and he's got his own plot to look after, um, but he's really kind in, in helping me build it. I've got all the materials. Um, yeah, so that's just exciting. I'm making my own compost now as well, um, which I never spoke to you about last week. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, my feathers. Swan feathers, so they're massive. So we've had uh, a family of swans on the local, we call it the lake, it's not a lake, it's like a pond, uh, but the local pond, which I pass on the way down here. And there's always the family of swans every year. And this year, they stuck around usually, they, after they've had the babies, uh, the cygnets, they tend to go travelling, so they'll get on the canal and kind of, you know, go up and down the canal, um, and we don't really see them as frequently. But this year, they've stuck around, so they stayed on the lake for quite a bit. Uh, but they're really territorial, obviously, and it was a bit awkward at times when I couldn't go past. Sorry, there's a, a wasp after me compost. Do you want to go in and have a little look? I'm talking to a wasp. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's been times I've had to change my route coming down here because of the family of swans. I don't think it's me necessarily, I think it's the dog obviously because they're trying to protect the young. Um, but yeah, we've managed to pick up a couple of swan feathers. And what are you going to do with them? You're probably asking me nothing, they just they'll sit in my shed because I think they're quite nice. And I've got, I think, my son Lawrence found this when we were on holiday in the lakes last year, maybe. I think it's maybe a buzzard. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I really like them. I should make pens out of them, shouldn't I? Something else. So, yeah, back to the compost. So I've been making my own compost. I think it's a really cost-effective way of obviously making your own compost, which is useful. Um, so that stuck so I felt mm, trying to show me compost bin but there's a there's a wasp that's quite enjoying whatever's in there don't go in there I'm trying to show I don't mind wasps I know people don't particularly like them very much but they don't bother me I'm saying that because I've never been stung I suppose I've Change your mind if it gets stung. <laughs> it's just flying about. Okay. So, this is my compost bin from home. And I, f I fill this up every week. So, as you can see, there's lots of great stuff in there. Sorry, that wasp. It's <laughs> funny you can see it. Does that taste nice? So, yeah, as you can tell, there's lots of like, fruit as well as vegetables, trimmings, and I put tissue in there as well. 
I'm going to get stung now, aren't I? After me saying I've never been stung. So yeah, so that gets filled up once a week and then I bring it down every weekend. Um, so yeah, it's excellent. I think that's all I've got to talk about today. I think what I'll do is today as well, I'll maybe show you the state of the shed. Um, yeah, give you a bit of a tour of my shed and maybe a little sneak peek at the greenhouse and I'll look at the progress of the tomatoes and my chilies. Um, oh, and my dahlia is flowered. So I'll show you my dahlia as well. I'm excited about the dahlia because I started them from seed, which I think is really nice. I just need to remember as winter comes closer, I need to put the dahlias inside because they just don't do well in winter and winter will kill them off, frost will just kill them off. I forgot to bring in a couple of dahlias last year and um, a few other things that just died in the winter. So yeah, I need to be quite mindful of that. So yeah, I think that's it. I think now the rain has gone off, which means I can get cracking on the weeding. But after I've drank my cup of tea, it's important, isn't it? I'll have my cup of tea and then I'll start weeding. So yeah, catch you soon. So I'm just going to do a really quick plot tour. The rain's held off. I've been here for about an hour or so now. I've done a little bit of weeding and transplanted some squash plants. And I've picked some more red cheek potatoes as well. So, um, as promised, here is the area for my new project which has been cleared. This formerly was a seating area slash dumping ground and as you can tell we've kind of moved some of the tables away <clears throat> and this is going to be the preparation for the hen run and coop. This is the little coop that I've got which needs a little bit of mending so that's going to sit inside the run itself hopefully. As you can tell, Boo loves this area. She thinks it's been prepared just for her to sleep. She likes lying on the mud. Um, she likes getting filthy. <laughs> Look at her little nose. Boo Radley, you've got a muddy beak. Look at your nose. Oh, my goodness. Wanna come and say hello? Wanna go give me a kiss? Oh, she's a good girl. Yes, she is. <laughs> I didn't mean literally. Oh god, she's filthy. So yeah. I don't know whether you can tell from the video. I have mentioned this before. My um my plot is on a slope. So it slopes considerably as it reaches the bottom. So you can probably tell here that it dips. The issue here is the amount of pressure that's gonna put on the boundary fence which I think inevitably will perhaps end up uh, knocking the fence down. You can kind of see that it's putting pressure at the minute um, on those posts. So yeah, it needs leveling off a bit, which we're gonna do. So we're gonna try and level it off before obviously we, we put the, um, the run and the coop here. It's quite exciting. We've got quite a lot of resources for build in the coop we've got timber and things as well so it is an exciting project I can't wait for it to be finished so yeah there's still quite a lot of preparation work that needs to be done before um, before we get building so yeah any sign of the squirrels I could hear them chattering before when I was um, weeding I'm quite fortunate to have the woodlands adjacent to my, my plot. It's quite secluded. It's quite tricky to get through this part of the woodland as well. So, um, so yeah, my grand willow tree, which I always worry about in the wind because it likes to drop its limbs. Um, so yeah, and as promised, I'll give you a little bit of a insight to 
how messy my shed is. I, I do apologise. It is isn't tidy as such. Um, I need to tidy it for winter. So my shed, which through the summer is literally just used to make me tea, to make a brew. Um, I have heating. So this is my wood stove, which is really useful in the winter when it's freezing down here. It's really cozy in the shed. So obviously I've got quite a lot of wood. You probably wonder why I'm bothering to collect it this time of year because I don't use it. It's because I burn it faster than I can collect it in the winter. So trying to have as much wood as possible. I tend to pick up bits and bobs as on my travels. Um, and my friend Keith is really, really good and brings me these kindling from his place of work. That's really good fire starter stuff. Um, so yeah, that's my chair <laughs> in the corner with handmade blankets that my mum made. Keeps me warm in winter. Um, there's like lots of jumpers, a pair of shorts for the summer, those sorts of things. These pictures were found in Skips, I think, and there's some lights behind that one. I've not used them yet, so I use them in the winter. Um, I try and I try and decorate the place a bit. I was going to paint inside, I just haven't got around to it. Really, so these are just cutouts from magazines from home, um, just to brighten the place up a bit. Yeah, it's just a bit of a dump. The glass painting, that was already there. So this is like a reclaimed shed. I have tried to remove it, but I'm frightened of the windows caving in, so I've just left it. Um, but yeah, it's a job for another day. Um, so yeah, just loads of bits and bobs. My seed tin. Um, there's mugs that and the potholes it kind of gave me, which I need to um, I need to put some hooks um, in the woodwork and just hang me mugs, I think. This is the new, the new squirrel proof chocolate box that Keith's given me with a lock on. They've not, um, they've not realized how to open it yet, but I bet you they do. Uh, but yeah, that's where my chocolate is. Stored nice and safe. So yeah, these are all kind of reclaimed things from home. Um, this is one of my favourite things, my gas lamp, which I use in the winter in here, it's really nice. Gives a nice little warm glow. But yeah, I need to organise it a bit better in here. So underneath there's lots of egg boxes um, in preparation for the hens. There's bags of clothes for the winter for the kids, there's newspapers. Oh, plastic bags, obviously my, my work boots. Um, there's wood under there, there's kids games, blankets, paint, weed suppressant, umbrellas. Yeah, you name it, it's shoved under there somewhere. So yeah, I need to organise it a little bit better, I think, in here. Um, and take some stuff to the tip. But yeah, everything in here has been donated to me or found in a skip, including these tables. Um, so yeah. Yeah, a job maybe for another day. There's always jobs for other days, isn't there? So yeah. So I'll just show you around really quickly. So this is where I've rehomed the tables at the moment. I don't know what to do with them, I think. The one in the middle there, that needs to go, so it's probably going to be used as firewood in the winter, perhaps. Um, and I need to develop this area a bit more. Um, yeah. A quick look at the greenhouse. Yeah, I've still got stuff that need go to be planted out, the radishes and stuff. So I've got plenty of tomatoes and peppers growing. Oh, look at these bad boys. I need to kind of state them up a bit better. Tomorrow's doing well. I know ideally, you know, you should prick out the side shoots of the tomatoes, but I actually prefer a smaller tomato. Um, so yeah, I've not really pricked out a lot of the side shoots as such. I need to, I need to kind of 
um, stake these a bit better. Um, that one's just gone crazy. So yeah, one of my peppercorns just looks so sad. That one's looking a bit better. It's got flowers on, which is a good sign. Here comes the fruit. Um, I passed on some more chilies last week. So yeah, that's the greenhouse. Just nearly fell over. Oh, still got, still got to plant these out. Um, squashes and courgettes and things. I planted a couple out today and I have taken up some more red jukes. I'm just taking them as I need them as opposed to taking them all at once. Um, I've just done a bit of weeding in the onion bed. There's parsnips. I've, there are parsnips. I've taken up all the turnips now. I need to plant some more because I love my turnips. Weeded the carrot bed over there as well. I'm terrified of carrot fly. So I'm always really careful there. So, yeah. So all these flowers, I, I need to deadhead these. I've got tortoises, so they will, they love these, so they'll eat them. And uh, busy lizzies don't look too happy. It's a bit overloaded, that, I think. So yeah, I need to tidy that up a little bit. Um, yeah, so all my, all my flowers, they've, they've all been planted from seed, which was something I promised myself this year, as opposed to buying everything from flipping supermarkets. Um, a dahlia. Oh, hello. I think it's Figaro, I think, the top of my head. My lupins look like they're about to flower as well, which is brilliant because I, I did these last year and I think the slugs just devoured them. I, put, I planted them up around my pond. So yeah, I'm really glad these have come up. The wheelbarrows are a really good idea. They seem to, yeah, everything seems to have come up okay. Um, yeah, there's an abundance of things in there, but yeah, my dahlia. Oh, you're so pretty. Look at the colour, I just love the colour, it's beautiful. The cornflowers, I love cornflowers. The colours of these cornflowers, this is like my favourite colour. just love that purple, beautiful. Oh, this bad boy that had the caterpillars on um, some weeks ago. I love it so much. It's it's called a banana custard. <laughs> I bought it at a plant sale from Norton Prairie Museum last year. Um, it didn't flower last year, so yeah, I'm, I was quite, I didn't think, I didn't realise it grew so flipping tall. So I think I'm going to, once it's finished flowering, I'm going to uh, find a home for it in the ground, I think. Definitely.
Hello again, so it's the end of Saturday and well it's it's almost five o'clock. So I've been here for a few hours now. I've done some weeding, I've managed to pull up some of my red jig potatoes. Probably too many. They're only meant to be for tomorrow's Sunday roast. Um some of them are quite a substantial size. Some of them are a little bit smaller, <laughs> but they'll do. So yeah, they should last me a couple of weeks. Um, no, in fact, they'll probably last me a week. Um, I'm glad actually that they're all right because uh, somebody else I was chatting to yesterday, day before, another plot holder, when I walked past his plot, he was he dug up all his spuds and was giving them a good wash um, because the rats had been eating them, which meant he had to dig them all up. So I was a bit concerned that maybe I'd have had an issue with the rats as well. But no, they all seem they all seem in really good condition. The potatoes, so I think they're fine. Mine, thankfully, so I don't have to dig them all up. I think I've only ever seen one rat on my plot. Now, I know the pests, the vermin, I quite like rats. Um, so I'm not too bothered. They've not caused me any issues. Like I said, I've seen one on my plot. So I'm just gonna have a cup of tea before I leave. Um, rain, rain's gone off. It's still really gloomy. I think the weather's gonna be a bit better tomorrow, so I will get a bit more done tomorrow. Um, I sometimes feel quite overwhelmed when I come to the allotment. Just the amount of work that seems to need doing, particularly weeding, it just, it just never seems to be on top of it. And now I'm here every day, obviously more of a weekend. Listen to those birds, sorry. There was a blackbird singing then. It's gone quiet now though. They always seem a lot louder this time of day for some reason. Or whether I just notice them because I'm sitting down. I love the sound of the birds. Anyway, so that's me. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support and those who are subscribing. Welcome to my new subscribers as well. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, if you've got any questions, anything you want to ask about what I'm growing allotment wise, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I do try and reply to everybody's comments. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to enjoy my cup of tea, listen to the birds and then head home. So I hope you're all having a really great weekend and I hope you all have a great week too. Stay safe out there. Take care. Thanks. Bye.